So let's suppose we have four 10 kilogram balls that are located at the corners of a square that has a length of 0.5 meters. So let's suppose we want to calculate what the magnitude and direction of the gravitational net force is on the lower left mass. So here we have the following four 10 kilogram balls that are aligned in such a way to create the following square where each uh, mass is located on the corner of the square. So each adjacent side, each adjacent length is 0.5 meters. So this side, this side, this side, and this side is 0.5 meters. And notice the distance from the purple to the blue ball or from the red ball to the uh, green ball is our diagonal which is given by the letter D. And that is given by taking the square root of the sum of the squares of the sides. So we take 0.5 squared that, multiply it by 2 and take the square root of that and that will give us 0.707 meters. So our distance from the purple to the blue ball is 0.707 meters. Our distance from the purple to the red and from the purple to the green is 0.5 meters. So also notice that the force created on the purple ball by the blue ball, the angle of the force is 45 degrees with respect to the horizontal, with the x-axis. And that's because we're dealing with a square. So we choose this to be the x-axis and this to be the y-axis. And we want to calculate what the net force is due to the gravitational pull of these objects on our purple ball. So let's begin by calculating all the forces acting on our object along the x-axis and then we'll find all the forces acting on our object along the y-axis. We'll take the square of those values, sum that up, take the square root and that will give us the net force. So let's begin with step one. The sum of all the forces acting on our purple ball along the x-axis is equal to, well we have two forces acting on the purple ball. We have the red force created by this red mass and we have the blue force created by this blue mass. Notice the blue force acts at an angle. That means we're going to have a component along the x-axis. And the component is given by taking the cosine of this angle and multiplying by the magnitude of the force. So both of these forces act along the x-axis in the positive direction. So we choose the x-axis in the positive direction to be positive and the y-axis upward to be positive as well. So positive red force plus cosine of the angle theta times the magnitude of the blue force is equal to, well, we replace these with the universal law of gravitation. So the gravitational constant G multiplied by the mass of the red ball, multiplied by the mass of the purple ball, divided by the distance between these balls squared. So it's S squared. Now we take the cosine of the angle theta and multiply it by the gravitational constant g, multiply it by the mass of this object times the mass of this object, and divide it by the square of the diagonal distance. So that's what we get. Now we plug in our value. So we know our g, the gravitational constant, is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons times meter squared divided by kilogram squared. And notice these objects, these masses are both 10 kilograms each. So we multiply 10 times 10. And we divide that by 0.5 squared because S is 0.5. Likewise, we have the same exact constant, the same exact mass, and then we multiply by the cosine of the angle 45 and divide that by 0.707 meters squared, the distance between the purple and the blue. So we plug those into the calculator, we add those values up, and we get a value of 3.612 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. So this is the force acting in a positive direction along our x-axis on the purple ball along the x-axis. 
What about all the forces acting on the purple ball along the y-axis? So once again, we have two forces, the green force created by the green ball, and once again the blue force, but now we're dealing with the y component of the blue force. And so we're multiplying the magnitude of the blue force times sine of the angle theta. And that's exactly what we have here. Both are positive. So once again, we replace them the same way that we replaced them here, and then we plug in our values. So we plug those values into the calculator, uh, we add these two values up, and we get the same exact magnitude as before, Six, uh, 3.612 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. So that makes sense because the cosine of the angle 45 and sine of the angle 45 are exactly identical. So these two magnitudes are exactly the same, except one points along the x-axis and the other one points along the y-axis. So now to find a net force, we use this equation. So we take the squares of each of these values, we add those values up, take the square root of the sum, and we get approximately 5.1 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. So now we know the magnitude of our force is 5.1 times 10 to the negative 8 newtons. What about our direction? Well, our direction is given by the following formula. We take the tangent of the angle theta and we multiply it by the following ratio. The ratio of this to this, and since these two values are exactly identical, that basically means when we take the inverse tangent function of the ratio, we take tan inverse of 1, that gives us 45 degrees. So that means the magnitude of our net force points in a direction at an angle of 45 degrees with respect to our x-axis, and the magnitude is given by this value.